Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Monday over here in the Atlantic. Main feature of attention, Invest 93L over here over northern Florida has a tail down to the Caribbean, had a weak little area of mid-level spin down here since yesterday, but probably not really a threat to develop here. Uh, doesn't have much of a pressure gradient going for it, though it is about to bring a lot of heavy rain to Hispaniola. The folks there may want to watch that. Here is the floater zoom in on 93L, very well defined low center moving inland over the northern Florida peninsula and into the Florida panhandle. Again, as I've drilled and drilled, the models were wrong about bringing this into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. We did not get low pressure here. We had a very weak surface trough, but the main low developed east of Florida and moved inland like this over northern Florida and the Georgia area. And I remember I said this was going to be the low's happy spot. And boy, was this a happy spot last night. I have no idea why this wasn't named. This was the surface map last night, 999 millibars. And look at that tight core of isobars getting closer together right near the center as this approached the Space Coast. This was most definitely something to see. And this was the buoy chart from a buoy right off of Cape Canaveral showing pressure in green and winds in red and blue. You do not see this. This tanked all the way down to 999 millibars and then gusts up to 65 miles per hour to 70 miles per hour as the center passed by. You do not see the pressure drop that rapidly. Rapidly with time, it became more rapid as we move towards the center and the winds picking up exponentially as we get towards the center. That is not a presentation of a non-tropical low. But the NHC dismissed this, this as a non-tropical gale center, which is hard to justify over 29 degrees Celsius water anyway. And they said it was non-tropical, but the AMZU satellite instrument measured, look at these temperature anomalies, right at the core. This red line indicates the center of the disturbance, and we had warm anomalies all the way up through about 400 millibars, easily making this at least subtropical. And this is not the only pass that showed the warm anomalies in here. Every computer I've seen, even the Dvorak estimates, called this ST2.5, which is their classification for a subtropical storm of 35 knot winds. And we had wind gusts in Brevard County of 62 miles per hour, 69 miles per hour, and 75 miles per hour near those NASA stations there. We had a lot of wind coming into the Florida coast and a lot of heavy rain, but the NHC did not name this. It'll be another one of those. That never gets named, but it doesn't change the weather that happened to Florida yesterday, and we'll just see what they do in the postseason. All right, over here in the Pacific, we have a very active monsoonal circulation. In here, we have Hurricane Hova moving east-northeast towards the Mexican coastline, and this is going to be a very bad storm for these folks, one of those rare ones that actually comes east towards Mexico. You can see the eye, the eye is clearing out here. It's probably going to be a major hurricane as it comes ashore. So our thoughts and prayers are with them along this coastline here. Notice that this overall monsoonal circulation is shifting eastward just a few days ago when we were talking about 93L before it developed. We had most of the activity out here when we had this other storm, Irwin, which is now dying because it's losing support. But now all this thunderstorm activity is shifting eastward as the MJO aggressively comes across. And as we've been talking about, this will probably start getting into the Caribbean now. And we're going to start seeing convective activity firing up. And uh, according to the European, by day seven, we have low pressure developing within this monsoonal circulation east of the Yucatan. And there's another low out here in the eastern Pacific. So this is a monsoonal nature system that the European is showing here. The GFS has been on and off hinting at it. It's been trying to push it back into the long range a little bit more here, more days 10 through 12. But we are seeing some model support for more truly tropical trouble to start occurring in the Caribbean. And here's the European Ensemble mean 500 millibar day 7. Notice that we have the ensemble member variants down here indicating low pressure. And then we have strong ridging developing back over the south. After the trough with 93L leaves out to the northeast, we have this solid ridge try to build back in over the south. But it only lasts for a few days because by day 10, the trough starts coming back into the eastern United States. And this implies that if there's anything going on down here, it may be brought north or northeast out into this area, the Florida, Cuba, and Bahamas area down the road so we may have to watch for trouble down here causing problems for folks in this area of the world as we get one of the stronger MJO bursts in phases 8 and 1 that we've seen in quite a while implies that there's going to be a very favorable region for development in here that we will have to watch closely over the next few days through this week and into next week. Alright that's it for today. Thanks for watching.